Hi everyone, we are now at the end of the end. We are at the last part of the last lecture of our Calculus 1 series. And so before we put this course to bed, I do want us to say a little bit more about integration and in particular with its relation to symmetric functions. Uh, there's two types of symmetries that we've been very interested in this semester. There's the idea of even symmetry and odd symmetry. Uh, and do recall that a function is even when if we take f of negative x, this is equal to just f of x. So if you reflect the function across the y-axis, you get the exact same graph. It's unaffected by that reflection. Um, odd functions are similar here. They have the property that if you take f of negative x, this is equal to negative f of x. So geometrically speaking, a function is odd if a reflection across the y-axis is equivalent to a reflection across the x-axis. And that's, that's equivalent to saying that the uh, if you rotate around the origin, you get the... 180 degrees, you get the exact same picture here. And so if your function's even, I want you to notice that if you integrate the your in, an even function from negative a to a, f of x dx, this will just equal two times the integral from a to zero of f of x dx. And the basic idea behind that is the following. If your function is even, uh, then maybe it looks something like the following, right? It's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So if you go from negative a to a, it's the exact same distance from the y-axis, then the area under the curve here is just going to be, the total area of the curve is just twice as amount as the area under the curve from the y-axis, just that, that, that is to the right, that is the right-hand side there. So if we just want to go from zero to the right, that helps us out here a lot. Um, and why does it help us out a lot? Well, it really just comes down to benefits of arithmetic, right? We have to calculate these things. There's some number crunching going on there. If I had a choice between any number or zero, hands down, I'm going to want to pick zero. Uh, and so that bit of arithmetic can help us out here um, in this in this type of calculation. When, when it comes to an odd function, on the other hand, though, how does odd symmetry affect the antiderivative, I should say, how does it affect the integral? Well, if you integrate from negative a to a of f of x dx, the area under the curve is just zero, absolutely zero, which is just fantastic. Uh, and so geometrically, what we're saying is the following. If we have some type of, um, some type of, let's take an odd function, so it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, and let's say we go from negative a over here to a, we're saying that the amount of area that's above the x-axis here is going to be opposite and equal to the amount of area that's below the x-axis. So when you take the net sum of these things, it always adds up to be zero. Which one nice thing about odd functions here is if you integrate an odd function along a symmetric interval, it does need to be a continuous odd function, by the way. But if you integrate a continuous odd function on a symmetric integral interval, then the area of the curve is always zero. You don't need an antiderivative. You can recognize symmetry and then just say it's zero, drop the mic and walk away. And the basic reasons behind this, so I've given you some geometric intuition behind that, but we can prove this thing algebraically as well. Because if you were integrating negative a to a of f of x dx, in both situations, you could break this up to negative a to zero f of x dx. And then you add that to the integral of zero to a f of x dx. It's always true that um, you can take an integral and break it up into pieces using some intermediate value, some zero that sits between negative a and a right here. And so for, for the first case, if we have, um, well, I'll, and so I guess for both cases still, let's switch the order of the first one right here, switch the zero and the negative a. And so you're going to get this statement, the integral of zero a f of x dx. I just brought the second one first. And then you're going to subtract from that the integral from 0 to a f of x dx, like so. And so this original expression is just equal to this right here. And so now this is where the even and odd business is going to come into play. So let's suppose that first that we are even, right? And if you're an even function, that means that f of x, f of negative x equals f of x. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a u substitution here, just for the second inter, just for the second one here. There should be a minus sign right there. I forgot to put. So for the second one, we're going to use the substitution u equals negative x, and hence dx, sorry, du, is equal to just negative dx. And so this puts our integral looking as we have the integral from 0 to a 
uh, f of x dx plus the integral from 0 to a of f, f of negative x. So I should say f of u. Oh, uh, what did I do here? Um, oh, I'm sorry, I do need a negative u right there. So you get f of u du. So the idea is when you make the substitution x equals x equals u equals negative x, this is the same thing to say negative u equals x right here. So you're going to get this f of negative u going on right there. This also will change the upper bound, so it'll be a uh, a instead of a negative a right there. And so this is this at this moment where you can use symmetry. So if your function was even, then the substitution here is that f of negative u will be just come f of u. And so under the even hypothesis, uh, this statement looks like the integral from 0 to a, f of x dx, plus the integral of 0 to a of f of u du. And although the variables are different, f of x and f of u, it's the same, it's the same thing. And this is just going to double up and give us two times the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx. Okay, that's what happens for the even case. For the odd case, though, for the odd case, things are a little bit differently. You get 0 to a f of x dx, and then you're going to get plus the integral from 0 to a. Well, in the odd case, uh, f of negative x here, notice, is negative f of x. So when you have this f of negative u, this becomes negative f of u du. And you can move this negative sign out in front. And so you're going to get the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx minus the integral from 0 to a of f of u du. And so again, even though the variable is different, x versus u, this is the exact same quantity, and these things will cancel out to give us a 0 there. So that's enough, that's enough talking about the justification. Let's actually see how one uses this in practice. So this function, or this integral right here, you're integrating from negative 2 to 2, x to the 6th plus 1 dx. And so you'll notice here that we have a symmetric interval. We're going from negative 2 to 2. So when I see things like that, I sort of ask myself, is there any type of symmetry going on here? And symmetry is not so hard to check here. If you take f of x to be x to the 6th plus 1, then f of negative x will equal negative x to the 6th plus 1. And when you take an even power of a negative, that actually makes it a positive. We get x to the 6th plus 1, which is just f of x. This is indicative that our function is even. And the reason we call it even function is if you look at all the powers of x, um, you have only even power. 6 is an even number. The 1, of course, is x to the 0, which is an even power as well. So this is an even function. So by the integral of even fu uh, symmetric functions we saw before, this will equal 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 of x to the 6 plus 1 dx. We do still have to calculate an antiderivative which that antiderivative will look like, look like x to the 7th over 7 plus x, but we evaluate from 0 to 2. And so when we plug in the 2, we get 2 times 2 to the 7th over 7 plus 2. But then we're going to get, when we plug in the 0, we get 0 to the 7th over 7 plus 0. You'll notice that this last term right here, everything just goes to 0, and that's exactly what's going to happen right here. Um, and so this observation of symmetry is just for the uh, the arithmetic benefit of things. Plugging in zero with all these fractions is so much nicer than any other number. So we, we use that as a benefit just to simplify the calculation of the integral we have in front of us. Um, the rest of what we still have to do, we start doing our uh, powers of two. We have to do two to the seventh. We can use a calculator, but if we've played the game 2048 enough, uh, then we might actually have these memorized. And so 2 to the 7th, we can just count on our fingers if we have to. Uh, we get 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 over 7 plus 4, 2 times 2. Uh, well, of course, we can times 2 by another, or 128 by another 2. So we get 256 over 7. And we have to add 4 to that, which we're going to write that as 28 over 7. Uh, combining like terms, we end up with the final form 284 over 7. So it's not that we could avoid all of the arithmetic, but the fact that 
we were able to plug in zeros at one point did make the final result a little bit easier to do. Again, it's not necessarily a saving grace here, but it makes it a lot easier to do with this one. It turns out in Calculus 2, one sees this type of even symmetry all the time, and we're very grateful for it. Um, what about this one right here? The integral from negative 1 to 1 of tangent of x over 1 plus x squared over x to the fourth. Look at this one right here. It's a symmetric interval again, so is it symmetric? Is the function symmetric? And so if we take f of x to be tangent over 1 plus x squared plus x to the fourth, this one might not be as obvious here, but if you look at f of negative x, oh boy, f of negative x there, you're going to end up with tangent of negative x, and you're going to have 1 over negative x squared plus negative x to the fourth. And so tangent is an odd function, so you get negative tangent of x on the top. On the bottom, you have even. All the even powers absorb the negative signs. And so you'll notice you end up just negative f of x from uh, negative f of x there. So this indicates that the original integral is odd. And so if we want to calculate an antiderivative of this thing, that is going to be monstrous. I will be impressed if you can find an antiderivative of this function. Um, at this stage of the game, right? But we don't need an antiderivative because we're integrating an, e an odd function along a symmetric interval. The theorem before says that this thing is zero and we're done. That's all that one has to do. Um, so as a fun little story, uh, a couple years ago, I gave a question very similar to this on a final for Calculus 1. It was a multiple choice question, right? Um, and all the students had to do was select the option zero. That's all I wanted to do. I thought, I didn't think it was going to be such a hard problem, but it blew their minds away. They did some crazy stuff trying to find antiderivatives. And this is calculus one, mind you. They didn't, they had no idea what to do. Um, so I now put this as a warning, right? Look for out for odd functions. If you can use those to evaluate antiderivatives, sorry, if you can use symmetry to help you with integrals, you might be able to avoid having to compute antiderivatives, which is the fundamental hardest part of these type of questions here. And so that brings us to the end of this video here and also brings us to the end of our lecture series, uh, Math 1210 Calculus 1 for students at Southern Utah University. Uh, it's been a good course. I hope everyone enjoyed these videos and learned a whole lot. If you have any questions, feel free to, to always post them in the comments below. Like these videos, subscribe so you can learn more about uh, fun math things in the future, right? Um, check out uh, my playlist for Calculus 2 Math 1220 uh, if you want to learn some more about calculus, right? And I hope to see you all sometime in the future. Everyone, keep on calculating. Bye.